the first thing we were in Arosna, that was the first thing we went to. That was the first thing, yeah. And it was the first, uh, the first thing for the independence also. Then after that, uh, we missed a few voting because my husband was in a government office, so we had to transfer here and there. So I missed out a few. Till we came and stayed in Subang Jaya in 1979, and we started to register ourselves again. And all this one, I never missed any. I turned 50 on the 9th of May this year. Uh, it was significant for me because it was 509, literally for me. 5050 on the 9th of May. Leading up to the general elections, I was I had decided that I was going to get involved in uh, to be a volunteer as a polling agent and accounting agent. So when our church uh, organized a talk to organize volunteers for to be pachas this year, at that point, I think the general idea was that election would probably fall on a weekend, so which was either 5th of May or 12th of May. Uh, there was an outside chance that it was going to be 9th of May. And I thought, I was thinking to myself that, hey, that would be very cool if it fell on 9th of May. Then I would have a birthday to remember. And indeed it did. That's what the government did. They decided to hold uh, elections on the 9th of May. Generally, I could summarize my feelings as one of pessimism. That's how I feel, I think, and that's, I think, how a lot of my friends also feel when it comes to the elections this time around, especially before the elections. Because m most of us, uh, I'm also an activist as well, and the general sentiment among activists was also quite pessimistic because many of us, we lived through uh, the Mahadeo era, and we didn't really like, well, not to say we didn't really, we generally do not like him uh, as well because the, the reason why we're in this mess was due to him. Before election, before our new Prime Minister was announced, I was very wary about voting for the opposition or voting in general. I was very, I was convinced to spoil my vote because why do I have to choose between the lesser of two evils? Why can't I get, why can't I choose somebody who's actually good for the country? Then Mahathir was uh, announced as the opposition's candidate for Prime Minister and then something in me changed and I, I guess I had that once, that one percent chance of even getting of winning and therefore I felt like I should give them a chance. Before elections, I was very pessimistic because you know they start they tried to like change the election days because they had control over the election days, right? So I just thought we've been uh, controlled by this government, the previous government for 60 years. So I didn't really think that we could change this time around. The thing is, everyone was afraid to express their views and whatsoever. So I, I just thought like, I knew they were gonna rig the election. So I didn't really wanna put so much hope into like thinking like, oh, we're gonna get a new government. It's probably gonna be the same thing. When I heard about news of the election, I asked my friend, family, teacher about it. They were confident that the opposition will win for this election. My parents, teacher, they were pretty excited. My friends, uh, however, they just wanted the holiday, I guess. So I was going to the supermarket to stock up on food as I heard that there was going to be a riot um, after polling day. So I, went, so I went to the supermarket to get my favorite Maggie Mee. Turns out the entire Maggie Mee was sold out. I guess people were really scared about the after the after day. So before election day, um, I talked to my parents about this whole GE14 thing. They were saying if PN won, many bad things will happen and our future will be broken. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were all very worried and 
bit scared, just a bit scared, but hopeful that yeah, and I just hope that Vietnam won't win before the election. So. I felt anxious about the voting because there was a 50-50 chance between the two parties, either one could have won. Nine of May came and I woke up very early that morning because I had to be down in Wang Samaju by 8 a.m. Uh, which was when my duty crew would come together to get ready for our turn to be uh, polling agents and counting agents. My duty started at 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock and during that 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock session um, my job was to make sure to cross off whatever voters uh, who came in and make sure that uh, we had already registered them as a voter once they had uh, thrown their votes. On my left was the Pacha from Pass, on my right the Pacha from Amno. We actually helped each other to keep track of all the persons that come in. Sometimes we would not hear the number properly, uh, we would just ask each other to, to, to check whether what was the number and on what page. Uh, so it was a very friendly atmosphere in that sense. Um, the whole neighborhood was heading there as well. You can see lines being formed at the polling center already. Tension is so thick, and yet there's also a bit of a fanfare and a bit of a, uh, excitement in the air. Especially when um, there was a small group of young people, you can see it, tell that they are really young and the excitement coming off them, you know, the aura of excitement exuding them and when it came in, you know, the, the older people were like clapping hands, you know, cheering them on, uh, congratulating them for, you know, uh, coming out to vote for the very first time. So there was that general sense of excitement, something to look forward to, a, a sense of positivity with a lot of the people. Um, especially with the older crowd, there's also that sense of optimism, which I don't share, uh, because I, in, within me, I'm still very much uh, pessimistic, but I know that, you know, one vote do make a difference, and that's the reason why I decided not to spoil my vote, but to head into the polling centre and make my vote count. On polling day, lining up, I was still deciding between spoiling my vote or voting for the opposition. But when I actually was in the booth and I saw the names on my um, the, on the paper, the piece of paper, I saw the names that I knew, and these people have been working very hard to make my electoral state much better. They have been listening to the people, and so I I thought I should not vote, spoil this vote because I can vote to make sure they stay in power, to make sure they continue doing the good work that, that they have been doing, and if. That means voting for the opposition. Then, yeah. So, uh, right after voting, I was so happy. It was the first time getting indelible ink on my finger, and I can't wait to vote again in four or five years. I unfortunately, my birthday's on May 31st. I turned 21, but you know, the day was on May 9th, so I do not have a black finger. When I arrived there, the crowd was very long, so I have to wait for two hours before I get to vote. When I reached uh, PJ, I was expecting a long line because there was a long line where I was serving. Um, so I expected a queue maybe an hour because there were reports that in some cases the queue was as long as two hours. So it was my, to my surprise that uh, I had almost a straight through pass straight into uh, my polling station, my polling stream. Uh, part of the reason was because as a 50 year old, most of the 50 year olds uh, at my polling station had already voted at that time. So arrived, checked for which room I was supposed to go into and I was straight in. So I was in and out in just about five minutes, so which was quite amazing. So in my family, 
my dad's election place is in Klantan. So it was on a Wednesday, so we're not going to drive all the way to Klantan and come back. And, but my mom's uh, polling place is at Mandatun Raza. So we decided to like follow my mom, basically, like we escorted her. She wanted to like make a statement. So she had a blue hijab and she had red shoes. Like the blue is like the Pakatan Harapan blue. And she like walked past all the Amno people because it's Banda Tunaza, you know. So she walked past all the people. Everyone just stared at her and I was just like, hey, what's up? That's my mom. <laughs> and then because I uh, we went around noon and I remember all my friends, they were saying like, oh, it was they had to wait like a few hours to vote. Um, so, but my mom, surprisingly, she just came to the school and then like they just told her to go to this one room and within 10 minutes we were done. I was like, what? Okay. So that was already a good sign. And then when we got home, you know, it was fun. And then um, we were like, I wonder what would happen, you know? We were all kind of like anxious, like what was going to happen at, uh, like when they count the votes. We were very anxious to know about the result. The, all the time we were in front of the TV there, waiting for the result to come out. But the result never came. Even after 2 a.m. I went to sleep, the result still not out. Okay, so like most Malaysians on that day, we were all on edge. We were all waiting for the results to come out. And like most of us, we were tuned in to Astra Wani, to all the other channels online and all that just waiting for the results to, to come in. Based on past experiences, you kind of know that they usually release the results between 8.30 to about 11, 12 p.m., uh, 12 a.m. like that. So I tune in and surprisingly, results were very, very slow. And everyone was really very anxious. My mom, myself, we were glued to the TV the whole night. I think many Malaysians were, keep, were, were staying awake that night for fear that, uh, or at least for me, uh, the, the fear was that the, the election results would be stolen. Um, and we just had to stay awake to make sure that the results stayed true. While watching the news, it was, at first, at first it was depressing. You could see how the numbers were going up and then suddenly the government would go up a little bit more. That was so bittersweet. My family were shouting on over the votes. I don't know why, but it was pretty intense. Man, my, my group chat from WhatsApp, they were constantly spamming about the votes. The group chat was filling up with messages about, oh, uh, one side is winning and the other side is winning. We were all very like scared, really scared, like super scared. My mom's hands were like shaking, so I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> the polling station uh, supervisors were refusing to sign the all-important uh, Form 14. Form 14 is where the, the final results of each station were, were recorded. Uh, that was important because that would prove who won which polling station. And that was the document which needed to be signed in order uh, for verification of the results. Credit to those guys who were making sure that the election commission officials were doing their jobs. The action began around 10 p.m. when the actual results started getting confirmed and you started hearing about how some of the leading uh, government figures has lost their seats, places where you think that it's impossible for the opposition to penetrate and make headway into were now in the opposition hands. You suddenly feel very Wow, is this really happening? And it was around midnight, midnight, and they still didn't release the, uh, the result. That's when I started to feel like, wait, 
maybe it's this could be the change when it was confirmed that um, the general vote well Pakatan Harapan won that's when I went to sleep I, I slept soundly after that because I knew it was a new Malaysia when I got up when I got up my grandson told me mama you know what happened we have a new government So we were very happy because all of us hoping for a change. The mood, you can feel it in the air that everyone was hilarious, everyone was excited, everyone was celebrating. Malaysia finally has a new government after 69 years. When I found out that we really, really have a change in government and it was real, it's not a dream anymore, it's reality. I was so elated, so happy. I was pretty relieved as I knew that Pakatan won because holiday, no one would, no one woke me up. So I went down the stairs to my mom screaming, oh, me, Pakatan won, holiday for us. <laughs> Next morning, I was awoken by my dad. Well, like, hurry up, you're late for school. Get ready, we lost. We have, you have school. And we're like, what? <laughs> what? It was like, oh, just kidding. Then, uh, to be sure, I went to check my group chat. And where, the, where my classmates left off, the scores was like, BM, uh, BM1. And I was like, wait, didn't you say you were just kidding? <laughs> and I went to the website and checked, oh, you won! Yay! <laughs> no school! Yay! No school! When no that finally happened, when, when Tun Mahathir had been uh, officially sworn in as our seventh Prime Minister, uh, I think the nation, myself especially, uh, could actually breathe a sigh of relief. The initial rumours and fears about there being riots there being uh, you know, people out to cause trouble in society uh, that never materialized. That didn't happen and it showed that people are actually growing mature. People are very much, uh, you know, we, we care about what we are doing and so we are not going to jeopardize this by celebrating wildly or going out there making our anger hurt and things like that. None of that happened. We changed, we voted, we changed the government, we celebrated, we moved on with our lives. And that's something to really, really be proud about as a Malaysian. 9 of May felt like a rebirth of Malaysia. Uh, I think for the first time, I could understand what it felt like to have been a Malaysian on the 31st of August 1957 because you were breathing a new air under a new government uh, with a bright new hope for the future. And that's what 9th of May felt like, or rather 10th of May felt like because when the Prime Minister had been sworn in, um, we had a new government we can now start believing again that there can really be a change in this country. I think the government has been making the right moves. I don't believe that they will not falter. Uh, there will be missteps for sure, but as long as we're progressing forward, I think that's what all Malaysians hope for. And that's what I hope for. I would love to see the new government uh, review the University Colleges and Universities Act, uh, especially the clauses which restrict young people from political participation and from being involved in anything that has to do with uh, civil society and politics and things like that. And really to see the public institutions of ours to be clearly separated from from the political government 
and also from any kind of religious influence as well. So I think it's not just about the academics as well, but it's also the kind of experience that we want to give to our students as well. So hopefully um, we will be moving on in, in the right direction from here on. But of course, in five years, what can we hope for? There's not much that we can really do in five years. Uh, all those laws that restrict the creative freedom of artists needs to be removed. Relaxing the censorship laws, such as the film censorship laws, such as the Printing Presses and Publications Act, um, remove the Official Secrets Act. Uh, because if they really want to walk the talk, they really need to prove themselves. And these are important things that they need to do, which is to be transparent, to not be afraid of sharing information of, of what's happening to the country with the people. I want us to all identify as Malaysians instead of like Malay, Chinese, Indian, none of that BS anymore. You know, that, that's one thing that I think should be changed, like the fact that there's Chinese schools, Tamil school and public school, why can't we teach all the languages in one school so that everyone can learn the language? I mean, I would be really cool, like, you know, I could speak Chinese, Tamil and Bahasa Melayu and English. I would be like a polyglot. <laughs> I hope that Malaysia as a society can change for the better, just like how we've had a change in government for our younger generation. For the better future for my, the next generation, that all the world will live peacefully. Malaysia. I believe that our new ministers can do their job correctly at the time and overall I, I have high hopes that Malaysia will be better with, with our new government. Hopefully we can settle our debts and have lesser corruption. I hope for uh brighter future for this country where there's no corruption and equal opportunities for, for all races. And I hope that Malaysia will become a better country and we will all live happily ever uh, after. The, the end! end. <laughs> <laughs>